Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Here, everybody's asking me to do the Perlo dance, so there you go. Today, I'm going to be doing grades for all the general managers of all the NHL teams, all 32, except actually, I'm going to do video doing half of them today. And then I'll be doing another video. We're going to be doing up until the Montreal Canadiens, I believe. Yes, Montreal Canadiens. And grades for the general managers thereof. Uh, I can give, I'm going to give a big shout out to all the people that come on my live stream that helped out with this. What we do is during my live stream, which you can catch up five days a week, if you subscribe right now, you'll find out the times and everything. Um, sometimes I do in the evening, sometimes I do in the uh, afternoon. I send out a, uh, I send out a, uh, thing in the morning usually to tell you when I will be on, uh, notification is, so go check it out. Um, but shout out to them. What we do is we go on our live stream and I ask you what the grade is for each general manager and people go, oh, I think it's this and that and that. Very knowledgeable people, by the way. Uh, if you're even if you're not if you just like to listen and have fun we get into a lot of detail we have a lot of frolic there will be frolic okay let's get into it the grades for each team's general managers on up right now starting with the Anaheim Ducks uh, Anaheim Ducks Bob Murray uh, he has been given the task of rebuilding the Anaheim Ducks, which has been going on for quite some time now. And uh, there has been some decent drafting. They got Isaac Lundestrom uh, in 2018, who is now playing and playing very well. Um, getting a, a two-way guy as strong as him uh, at 23 is not a bad pickup. Um, they've done very well that way. Comtois. In 2017, was a second-round pick. He's been put up 33 points in 55 games last year. It's taken a bit, but he has been producing. Uh, T Troy Terry was a uh, was drafted 148th in 2015. Played a regular role. Has probably seen his upper end of what he's going to be, but still not bad pickup. So I would say under. Um, Bob Murray's tenure, uh, you look at Max Jones, Sam Steele. Now, there are, uh, talking to Anaheim Ducks uh, fans in the Facebook uh, groups that I talk, which I do a lot, um, they're disappointed with Max Jones and Sam Steele. But honestly, they're about on the right trajectory of what you expect from a 24th overall and a 30th. The problem is... This team doesn't have any breakout players. In fact, most of their draft picks have been very safe. And they haven't, they don't really have enough skill. They have a lot of two-way guys that can't score much. Of course, we have Trevor Zegers that is is on his way to changing all that. That they picked uh ninth overall in 2019. Looks like a beast. Great pick. Jamie Drysdale picked sixth, 2020. Looks like a beast. Great pick. Are they even close to being a contender? No. Um, and my question has been, why are we continuing to fly with guys like uh, Manson, Larson? Why, why not just do the whole rebuild? Just do it. I know you need veterans on your club. It's true. But there's a lot of value in Hampus Lindholm and Josh Manson right now. Then, And by the time this team is good, their career is going to be almost over. Well, maybe not. Like three, four years probably still. It looks like a three, four year window here. My issue with uh, what Murray has done is that he didn't go out and get enough draft picks to speed up this rebuild as, as much as he possibly could. And I would say that, he was, they, that they have been a little bit too safe on their picks. They could have got a lot more skill than they did in the spots that they got them. So, anyways, um, the community gave Murray a C 
And I get Murray a D, and that's the other reason. The main reason I'm a little bit chapped, because John Gibson's at 28 years old, one of the best goaltenders in the league being wasted here in Anaheim. Again, trade him. You can always get another goaltender. Like, he looks frustrated. I think that's the biggest reason why I give him a D here. I um, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how these guys all pan out. Uh, these young players, because the reason why they they keep veterans, uh, Murray is sure is keeping veterans, is to, to have these kids come up and have a veteran to lean on. I just think you don't need to keep as many as you did, and you could have got a lot better, a lot more draft picks to speed up this rebuild a lot more. Tell me what you think, Anaheim Ducks fans. Okay, Arizona Coyotes. Uh, of course, we know that, you know, they are totally in rebuild mode. And uh, really, oops, I wanted to go back here. The only thing that matters here is this for me. 2000, first of all, he, the, first of all, Armstrong made some shrewd moves to pick up uh, draft picks in this previous draft um, because they had no first, first round pick. And uh, who was it that they traded? I don't know why it's slipped in my mind now who, who they traded to get. Uh, I'll probably figure it out when I go. I'll, I'll figure out when he got go later. But next year, he's already picked up. Oh, that's what it was. It was Larson. Yeah, Larson. And uh, so they picked up Gunther. Nice pickup. Uh, for a draw for a, a contract that looked pretty horrible. Now Larson can turn his career around a little bit. He's been kind of floundering there in Arizona, and may work out in Vancouver. But I still say he got incredible value from a player that uh, is a poor contract and wasn't going to be of much value to them. See, now here's the difference between Arizona and what I just talked about in Anaheim. Armstrong is just getting rid of all the veterans. We'll add veterans later on the cheap that are known to want to help kids along and build this franchise. You don't need to have $8 million guys, $6 million guys, $5 million guys performing those roles on large contracts when they have value out there. So that's why I think Murray had a problem. But here Armstrong is just crushing it. He's got two first-round draft picks next year and five – Second rounders in the second round. That is fantastic uh, for what he has done there, uh, for what he wants to do. If you're going to rebuild, that's what you want to do. And he did it. And, uh, yeah, is their team going to be poopy next year? Absolutely, no doubt about it. They're, he's uh, – uh, it's going to really suck, but it's kind of supposed to. He got another first from, from Darcy Kemper. Again, I just talked about with Anaheim. Why keep Gibson? You probably could get a first from the Edmonton Oilers or something like that for him right now. He gets a first and Timmons. So he is stacking this roster with as many picks and prospects as he possibly can. I give Armstrong an A for doing exactly what you're supposed to do when you're trying to rebuild. And uh, the community gave Arizona a B, which I don't know, I find kind of odd. I, I, I think we had a discussion back and forth about it. They said that he, you know, he should have got a goaltender still, but he still could. And you don't desperately need a goaltender when you're rebuilding. So that's the way I look at it anyways. Tell me what you guys think, Arizona fans. Next. Boston Bruins. Um, Sweeney. There is This is up and down, up and down. He makes really good moves, and then he makes poor moves. Uh, but I think there was a few guys in my live stream that said that the 2015 draft was is almost unforgivable, and I kind of agree with that. Three picks in the first round, I think it was like, is it 13th, 14th, and 15th, or something like that? 
or 12th, 13th, and 14th. And they got DeBrusque, Sinition, and Zaboral. When they could have had Connor, Barzal. Now, there are, there is something to that. It's very possible that uh, players look at other, tell their agents, they look at their rosters, like, for instance, say Barzal, and say, you got Bergeron and Krejci there. Where do I fit? I really don't want to go to Boston. Can you just let them know that, that I'd rather not go there? And if you're a general manager and a guy doesn't really want to be there, doesn't seem like a fit, you probably got to let him go. So there are some things like that. I don't think Connor is that, though. I don't know why Connor wouldn't go. There was definitely a spot for him. Uh, but I could be wrong. However, there was a lot of other players they could have took. You look at that draft. Oh, my gosh. And uh, they didn't get hardly anything. The only thing that saved them was getting Brandon Carlo in the second round, which helped out an awful lot. So um, I got a, a B- minus and a B-. minus. We, we gave them a B- minus because... Uh, oh, they got yeah, Jake DeBrusque isn't panning out. That's what it was. It was Jake DeBrusque isn't panning out. That hurts. And that's not really their fault. I mean, but they did go off the board to get Jake DeBrusque. Jake DeBrusque and Darren and Sinition. Sinition was was a second round projected second rounder. DeBrusque was projected a late first. So they went off the board a little bit to get him, and now he's not panning out, and that hurts. However. He makes some nice moves getting Taylor Hall at the deadline for virtually nothing and then being able to resign him. Uh, getting Craig, for, Craig Smith off a of free agency was a nice little signing for $3 million. Um, Pasternak, I, I don't think he made that deal with the, gave, gave him that deal. Tell me if I'm wrong about that, but I don't think they, he gave Pasternak that deal. I think that was before him. But they pick he, he picks up free agents not bad. So um, getting a B, B minus to me is pretty good. It's just the drafting and developing hasn't been working with him, except for like Charlie McAvoy, who probably drafts and develops himself pretty much. Um, Matt Greslick has played pretty well, but I don't think he was part of the his draft, uh, any of his drafts that he did. Um, and then, like I said, Brandon Carlo. Picking up Mike Riley on a, as a free agent was good. Derek Forbert, I think, is going to pan out very well. Maybe a little high, but dollar-wise, but I don't think so. I really like Forbert. Um, and picking up Linus Allmark. So, like, he's done a lot of good moves for free agency, but the drafting has really hurt them. So what do you guys think, Boston Bruins fans? Uh, do you agree with that? And uh, tell me in the comment section. Next, the Buffalo Sabres. Uh Chris Drury, it's a little difficult to uh, give him a rating right now since he hasn't been in there very long. We're going to kind of have to see here. So we kind we gave him a C because there really wasn't much to go on. About the only thing you could go on is the Eichel situation. So if what do you, how do you think he's handling that? Holding strong, you know, basically saying we're not going to, you got to do it on our terms for the most part. Um, do you think he should take care of it right away? It depends on what you think of that. But, um, and I'm on the fence about both because the whole situation is weird to me. Um, the fact, but I, I, you know what? I think I should give him a C plus because he hired Granado and Granado has been fantastic as a coach. So um, besides that, the roster as it's brought up right now, he needs to get a goaltender. He get a, should get a minus for that. Uh, I don't know what he's doing with Will Butcher here. He's he's been a dumpster fire in New Jersey. Um, but the truth is, they're not looking to win next year. So if some of these guys don't pan out, it's not the end of the world. Yes, Buffalo, you're back to rebuilding again. Anyways, we both gave him a C. Tell me what you think, Buffalo fans. Uh, next, the Calgary Flames and uh, Tree Living. Uh, we, we were all over the place here. There were some people that had him as high as a B. There were some people that had him as low as a D-. Um, 
for me, I don't know if a lot of this stuff was his fault. He, he didn't bring in Monaghan, but Monaghan hasn't played well when he was in there. He did hire Ward, and Ward didn't work out, so you kind of got to give him a minus for that. Brings in Sutter. It's only been half a year to be an axe man. Uh, the Mal- Milan Lucic trade turned out to be not as horrible as I thought, but still not great. Uh Trading Hamilton for Noah Hannafin and, and, and Lindholm. It, apparently, he just wasn't working out in the room there in Calgary, so he had to make a deal. So it depends on how you judge that. You know, his hands were tied, and he got some pretty decent return for the situation, if you want to look at it that way. Uh, uh, Chris Tana from, from the Vancouver uh, turned out really well. He actually had a really good year last year. And I didn't see it coming, to tell you the honest truth. He looked like he was having some problems there in Vancouver, but came into Calgary and didn't do too bad. Jacob Markstrom, I thought that was an overpayment. And we'll see if I'm right down the road. Uh, Zadaroff, you know, the Zadaroff trade, I think they gave up a lot for a guy who is a very, very one-way uh, his analytics make him look like he's an elite defensive defenseman, but I really think he was propped up a lot by uh, the player that, that he had some really good puck moving defensemen with him. If they don't do that in uh, Calgary, if they and they don't really have that, I think he could look really bad. I think his his analytics are not going to look as good in Calgary as they did in Chicago. Um, so it was a mixed bag. The community gave him a C minus because let's face it, no matter what you say, part part of being a manager is hiring a coach that can create an environment for winning. And he didn't do that. And part of being a general manager is creating an environment for winning. And that hasn't happened. So no matter what, he might you might look at these moves and say some are good, some are not. But for the most part, Calgary on paper at least, should be a better team than they are, and they're not. So I give them a C-, and uh, the uh, community gave them a C- as well. Tell me what you think of that. Tell me what you think of that, Calgary fans. Uh, Carolina Hurricane, Don Waddell. uh, When they first picked him up, I was a little like, really, Waddell? I mean, he, he hadn't did anything since Atlanta. Now, that was a dumpster fire, but I'm not sure that was all his fault. I think the whole organization and ownership was kind of bad there. Went to Toronto and sort of hit, hit, hit in the shadows for a while before he decided to come to Carolina for, for what I understand to be a very low salary, uh, just to be a general manager again. And he's bought in and really likes it there. Uh, he has made some great moves. He got Tuvo Teravine in. Uh, Nito Niederreiter is turned out after two organizations. Does it look like his career might be sliding down the toilet? He picks him up and they do well. Hiring Rod Brindamore, you got to give that. That general manager did that. Got to give him props. I was Brindamore just was has been fantastic for that team. The drafting has been superb. Uh, Marty Nietzsche, fantastic. Picking up Vincent Trocek was a good deal from Florida. Uh, they gave, I think they gave up Lokanen in that deal, if I remember correctly. So they gave up a really good player to get him. But second line centers are hard to find in the NHL, and he had 43 points in 47 games last year. Not too shabby. Um, picking up just Jeffsper fast worked out well from the Rangers. Um, now he's building sort of a, a Ranger pool here, ex Ranger pool. Getting Derek Stepp out, watch. I think that was a great move. He's a great locker room guy. Um, so there was minuses, I believe, from the stream, from the community, from the stream on losing Hamilton. However, Carolina is not is still in the infancy of building a hockey market there. So they, they can't really be tight to the cap all the time. they got to save some money. Hamilton was a big ticket. They couldn't afford him, and they let him go. But I think he did a heck of a job bringing in, and it's not here, um, 
Yeah, D'Angelo, Anthony D'Angelo for a million dollars. I'm I'm not going to judge whatever happened in New York. All I know is they've got another great pickup, which Brady Shea, by the way, that he gave up a first for, um, and then picked up Ethan Bareford Fogel. We'll see what happens there. His only real mistake here is possibly Jake Gardner at four million. But besides that, I don't see any mistakes. Oh, except for this whole thing about kind of goaltenders being an afterthought. Uh, we'll see. They got. I'm going to give them. I'm not going to give them a score. A, go, a score on this or a grade on the fact that Derek An, uh, Frederick Anderson was injured last year. He may know something I don't know. But from what I can tell, that injury problem there is brutal. Uh, but we'll see. He must know something I don't know. Antti Ranta as well. Those would be the big minuses for me. But overall, I think he put this, to, this together really well. And as I was going to finish saying with D'Angelo, he brought in guys like Derek Stepan, who played with D'Angelo. I'm sure he conversed with all of these guys. Jesper Foss played with D'Angelo. Brady Shea, as I just mentioned, played with D'Angelo. Uh, Antti Ranta, another guy that has been injured like crazy, but he played with D'Angelo. So I'm sure he talked to all of them about this situation with D'Angelo, and they seem to give it the green light. So I can't, you know, all things being considered, if he turns out to be, you know, whatever this off-face stuff is taken care of, and he just plays his game for a million dollars. He did a fantastic job. Might be the signing of the summer. Uh, so we have him with a the, Carol. We have him with a B. I have him with a B two because of the goaltending situation. Right? Get a goaltender. Like why screw around with a goaltender? You're not going to win a cup without one, without a really good goaltender. Why? We, I don't. I don't get it. That would be my my. I he, if it wasn't for that, I'd have an A A plus for sure. Uh, next, Bowman Stan Bowman with the Chicago Blackhawks. Uh, there, this was all over the place. There was people that gave him a D minus, and there has been there was people that gave him an A, um, which I could see on both sides. Their drafting has been very good. Um, what I love about the Chicago Blackhawks is that they started rebuilding and they didn't tell anybody, including the players. So a lot of these young guys like Alex Dabrinkat, Kirby Doc, uh, Alexander Nylander, who they traded for, um, Ian Mitchell, you know, they, they got to see what it looked like for a team to believe they were cup contenders and go play. Jonathan Taves, he never like when when they traded Crawford, it kind of a bell went off in his head, and he said, "What we're rebuilding? Nobody told me we were rebuilding." Blah 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 blah. And most people on the outside, certainly me, I was like, "Dude, if you didn't know they were rebuilding, you should fire your agent." I don't expect players to know every situ- what general manager, what the people higher ups are doing all the time. Their focus is on win win now, and let's win the cup and all that kind of stuff like that. But you have an agent there that could at least kind of nudge you and say, hey, you know what, I think maybe we might be rebuilding the tad here. Because they were. They were, you know, they were letting players go that, uh, and uh, they weren't acquiring players at the, at the deadline to try to win cups and stuff like that. They were, they were keeping their draft picks and they were, they were uh, drafting, knowing that they were likely not going to be in the playoffs or close to it. So uh, it was funny that they didn't know. But their drafting has been really good. Uh, Kubelik, uh, Debrinka, Doc. I think Kubelik actually came in a trade. Sorry about that. Yes, they, he did. They did. But they, they picked up young players through draft or trade very, very well here. The Seth Jones move seems a little steep to me, but I have a feeling that he's going to be a different player in Chicago, and that 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 deal is going to look really good. I'm talking about Scott. We're talking about Scotty Bowman here. I know it's Stan as well, but Scotty Bowman is up there, probably the most brilliant hockey mind of all time, 
hard for me to give a poor grade at all to him because if, even if I don't understand what's going on later, I'll probably go, that's genius. Like, for instance, the fact that they traded their goaltenders last year and it looked like they had nobody, but little did they know they had, or little did we know that they knew they had Kevin Lankinen who crushed it last year. And then this year, they go and get Marc-Andre Fleury and all of a sudden become a contender. So this rebuild has turned into a team that can be considered a contender with a guy like Marc-Andre Fleury as their goaltender. And Jake McCabe was a beautiful move if he can just stay healthy. So I gave Bowman a B-plus, Stan Bowman, Scotty Bowman a B-plus. Hard to give him anything lower than that, except for the community and some people within the community. They gave them really low marks because they believe they don't have enough depth, meaning, and I, and this is the thing, we had a discussion about it. Dylan Strome, Borgstrom, Nylander is not what you call a classic third line. It's their lower depth. They don't have a lot of playoff performers in their bottom six, and I kind of agree with that, but I still think they've done a heck of a job rebuilding on the fly and uh, you know, making this team probably a playoff team this year. Next, Colorado Avalanche and Joe Sackick. I mean, what has he done wrong? The Duchesne trade was an absolute gem. Waited it out, waited it out, waited it out, which is kind of what people, a lot of people think should be happening in Buffalo with Eichel. It looks like they're doing Waited out, got guys like, got Samuel Gerrard in the deal and first round picks. Tell me if you know, I think it might have been actually Newhook. Tell me if you know exactly all, everything that came back in that because I didn't check it out. But the drafting, the drafting with Joe Sackett has, has been very good. JT Confers, Tyson Jost hasn't really panned out the way they completely wanted, but he's a solid player. Um, picking up guys like Valerie Nichuskin for nothing. Alex Newhook is a draft pick that looks superb. And then, of course, you know, Kale McCarr. That was kind of fell into their lap, but still, you still got to pick them. How many teams have you seen take go take a flyer on somebody else instead of taking a stud an, of what looked like an obvious stud and, uh, you know, not getting anybody out of the deal? And they haven't made any mistakes. Getting Devon Taves for two seconds from the Islanders it was unbelievable. I've been like propping up this guy for ever. In fact, when I did a Marner trade for Toronto before Marner signed, Dev Devin Taves was part of the deal. And I remember talking to Toronto fans and they're like, Oh, you think you're going to get a bunch of, you know, why, why the heck would we want Devin Taves? Well, now, you know, this guy's superb. Uh, Eric Johnson it could be back, and then you know drafting Bo and Byram, L losing out on Grubauer, figuring that they didn't want to pay him all that much money, but I think he waited it out until he found out he had Kemper and said, "Okay, Grubs, we don't need you. We can get Kemper at three and a half for next year." Uh, probably because he's been, you know, waiting around in Arizona. He won't make as much as Grubauer does. Brilliant move. Everything to me that he has done, Sakic has done, has been absolute brilliance. I gave him an A+, plus, and the community gave him an A. I don't know how there's not a plus there. There were some A-minuses. I, I don't get it at all. Tell me what you guys think there in the comment section about that. Dallas Stars and Jim Nill. Um, Jim Nill has got a very aggressive... Uh, Dallas is a very aggressive owner. Jim Nill has been very aggressive because of it, and I think he's done a really good job considering he, he doesn't have a very patient owner that ever wants to rebuild. He may have to end up doing it, but for me, the drafting of Ropo Hints and Jason Robertson, uh, Radic Facts a little while a while back, I don't, I don't believe that was Jim Nill that was part of that, but uh, Dennis Garion up to a lesser extent, um, and Essel, Essel Lindell, uh, Miro Hiskinen, like they have found ways with, uh, Jason Robertson was a 49, 
uh, or sorry, Ropo Hints was 49th overall in 2015. And like, watch this kid, man. He's probably going to take take the first, oh, uh, uh, the the first C from Tyler Sagan this year. Uh, Jason Robertson was 39th overall in 2017. These are the type of late round picks, uh, or like like late firsts or second, third, fourth rounds that you absolutely need if you're never going to go through a complete rebuild. Uh, picking up Pavelski, everybody thought, oh, that's too much money. The guy's been a beast. Like, I, I thought he did really good. Um, and, oh, f- don't forget Ottinger, who I think will be the number one goaltender this year. I, I, I can't say too much poor about what he has done in Dallas. I had him as a B plus, and I don't even know why I gave him an A. I didn't give him an A after I just, you know, said all that, to tell you the honest truth. I don't know why I went B plus, but the community went a B, and that seems low to me. Tell me what you think, Dallas Stars fans. What what do you give Jim Neal for his work in your fine city? Uh, Columbus Blue Jackets and uh, Kekalainen. Sorry, his name sometimes escapes me. It's a tough name. Got a little something in your Kekalainen there. Got a little Kekalainen in your what else? Uh, he's had to, like it's hard to judge. His drafting, the drafting has been very good. Alexander Tessier. Uh, we'll see what Igor Shinikov does. Um, picking up Jake Bean in this, like making the deal that he did with for Jones and getting Adam Boquist back, plus like a first, a second, like huge package for Jones. That's almost an A in itself. Watch this Boquist kid. He is freaking fantastic. I was so surprised that they were able to get him in that package. Um, But he picked up Panarin from Chicago knowing that he had to go to New York. He was going to go to New York. He was making it clear to everybody. Panarin did not, like, hide it and then come out later. He They knew, right? Um, So, but he's, he's taking over for... General managers that never got this team in the playoffs. Ownership is like desperate to get this team in the playoffs so they can start making some money and give the fans something to cheer about. So he goes out and gets Panarin. Um, at the deadline that year, he gets Duchesne and a bunch of other players and gives up a whole lot of draft picks that they knew they were going to lose everybody, but he had no choice. So it was a diff like it's hard to rate what he has done because he has had to do a lot of the things that he did and he did some things that you normally wouldn't have to do in an organization. So I, I, I what did we give him? A minus and an A. Amazing. Um he just had to make do with so many different things that have been happening there. And uh, I think he's made do very well. I, I just think we we believe that he's made do uh, very well. He picked up Sillinger and Johnson here in the dra- in the draft, and he's rebuilding this team back up. I think he's rebuilding it up fairly quickly. We'll see how it turns out. But I think under all the difficult circumstances that he's been put into, this team is looking not too bad considering. That's why we gave him an A. Uh, next, Detroit Red Wings and Stevie Y. It's like sacrilegious anything bad about Stevie Y, isn't it? Um, he's a god. He's my favorite male human being on the planet. Jacob Barana, I think, is a fantastic deal. It's going to look fantastic. Uh, watch. I bet you he gets over a point a game next year. It's like he identified the perfect spot to be able to get Verana for a guy who he wasn't very happy with in, in Mantha, that he wasn't very happy with for the last little while. It was quite apparent. So a depreciating asset that's not really having all that much success for a guy who is probably going to put up a point a game next year, I'd say that's a win. Um, there's a lot of question marks here because we got to see how these young guys turn out. 
I just think he gets the benefit of the doubt that all these, that most of these draft picks are going to nail it and they're going to turn out okay. The only minus is I don't understand the Nick Letty trade. I, I don't get it. He's terrible defensively. I don't know how that's helping out your roster, but I'm sure he knows. Um, we'll see how Maurice Sider turns out. He was he, They went off the board and picked him in 2019. He's looked like a beast in Europe ever since he uh, got drafted, so it looks like he's going to turn out. Uh, getting Nadalkovic for basically a third because they probably weren't going to be able to sign Bernier anyways was a big win, although I think he's going to struggle more in Detroit than he certainly did in Carolina. Uh, this... Eiserman has all the room in the world to build this into a dynasty, and we all believe he was. I think part of the reason why he gets the big A-plus here is because he's Stevie Y. He did what he did in Tampa Bay, and it appears like he's doing the same thing in Detroit. Tell me what you guys think about him. Uh, I, I also loved, loved, loved when he picked up Adam Ernie for basically nothing. I really liked, that, liked Adam Ernie, and he's turning out really well there, so... Uh, oh, Philippe Zadina. Watch out for him next year. He At the end of the year last year, he looked fantastic. Uh, but good drafting. We haven't seen the fruit of it completely yet. There's a lot of players that still need to come up and show themselves. Lucas Raymond. Uh, there's uh, uh, Taylor, uh, Niederbach will probably play this year. Uh, a lot of a lot of draft picks. We're, we're going to have to see how they turn out, but I think everybody's just confident Stevie Wise is going to is going to rock it. That's why we all give him an A plus. Uh, Edmonton Oilers, uh, Holland. He's got. It's a very difficult place to be a general manager in Edmonton. It's hard to get free agents to go there because of the cold weather, the tax system, and all of those sort of things like that. It's not the sexiest city in the world. Um, but that being said, he's had a lot, he's had a little bit of a time now to build this roster up. And I'm really concerned, and I think the streaming community is very concerned about some of the defense that they've brought in here like Duncan Keith at $5 million for the next two years for a guy who's basically an offensive defenseman and his defensive analytics have been really bad the last little bit. Uh, in Chicago, there plays a very offensive system, but still uh, not great. Not great. And I understand it's difficult for them to get uh, players there. It might have been the best that they could get but I still think maybe you just pass. Uh, then you couldn't sign Larson. What's the reasons for that? I, I don't know. Again, you were, it's Edmonton. Maybe they went to Seattle, which is a much kind of trendier, prettier city, so it's possibly something to do with that. But then giving Tyson Berry three years at four and a half, not bad except for the fact that you have, there's so many players here that are not great at defense. Darnell Nurse, 9.5. There's a lot of people that think that's way overpayment, and they could be right. Uh, but he, I still think he's going to get better at defense. He's 26 years old, though. It's got to the point where his progression is probably as – this is almost as good as he's going to be. So you could make a case that $9.5 million for him is pretty steep. It's just who's going to play defense. And then not doing anything about the goaltending situation with Mike Smith and Koskinen. Um, is is it a situation? I mean, Mike Smith, when he played, which he, and he played a lot last year, was had a .923 and a 2.31. You can't really ask much more for the, than that from a team that isn't great on the defensive side of the puck. He's 39 years old, though. That's what people are afraid of. And Miko Koskinen uh, went way downhill last year. So I don't think that's a Stanley Cup goaltending combination there, and I don't think anybody else does too either. Um, signing Kyle Turris, this is a big one. This can raise the score because Kyle Turris obviously stopped taking care of himself and his conditioning. He looked like a rail out there. 
Apparently this summer he's been rocking the weight room and uh, is going to get himself back into shape again. So we'll see. That could end up turning out to be not too bad. But as it stands, it's not good. And um, Bear for Fogel, oh, geez, you listen to the boards on the Oilers thing. They're all over the place. I think he's a defensive third liner who has a difficult time putting the puck in the net. Uh, he got lucky there for a little bit. He, he, he was, he had, and then he just went to nothing. Stone hands. Uh, and then Zach Cassie and it's question. He's apparently he was playing with a very badly hurt hand last year. So we'll see what he, if he can get back to his, where he was a year before. But overall, this lineup is, it's just lacking to me in, uh, and then of course the Zach Hyman pickup. I don't think it was an overpayment at five and a half. Eight years is tough, but again, it is so hard to get guys to come to Edmonton. And this is a Selkie like winger here from Hyman. Like he'll get Selkie votes and wingers. It's hard to get Selkie votes. So overall I gave him a C, a C. Uh, the community gave him a D plus. We'll see how Evan Bouchard turns out. There's a bunch of draft picks that haven't come in here, but it's pretty tough to, to gauge. However, I, I still don't think this team is a playoff team. I mean, in the playoffs, when they get in the playoffs. I still don't think he's built a team that can win a cup. And I think everybody's expecting that when you got McDavid, right? Okay, next. Florida Panthers. Zito. Uh, just flat out tell you right now, A plus all day. He crushed it every last year. Gets hired last year, <laughs> brings in Carter Verhage. Uh This year he brings in Sam Reinhart for basically a goaltender when they've already got depth at the goaltending position, plenty of depth in a second round pick. Are you kidding me? That is insane. Florida Panthers fans. In Flor watch what happens with Sam Reinhardt in Florida, if, especially if they can play him at center with Huberto. Who knows? Who knows, man? Like, he could be a 50-goal scorer. He really could. It is unbelievable that they only paid that little to get him. Um, nice little signing of Anthony Duclair last year. He put up some decent numbers. Not great defensively, but he continues to work on his game. And 32 points in 43 games is not too shabby, even if the player is not that great defensively. Picked up Sam Bennett for, what was it, a second? And as soon as he comes over, he just crushes it in Florida, looking like a second-line center, like he always wanted to be in Calgary, but they wouldn't allow him to do it. Zito identifies this, goes and picks him up. Uh, fantastic. Uh, like you said, Carter Verhage from Tampa Bay, turns into a 36, like that would be 72 points over an 82 game season. Woo! And basically gave up nothing for him. Uh, this lineup is just, uh, everything he did has pretty much been a good move. But the only thing that he has a difficulty with, he didn't make the mistake of Sergei Bobrovsky. So we'll see. And he, I don't believe he drafted Spencer Knight, but that could that's probably going to save him. But overall, a plus, A plus, A plus. Fantastic job. One of the best jobs. Oh, yeah. I forgot about the Patrick Hornquist for Matheson. What? You get a guy there that they needed a heart, they needed heart in the room. He lets uh he lets Hoffman go as a no heart player to don't off. Same sort of thing, like just vanilla guys that come into the rink and hopefully they pot a couple goals and go home to these diehard you know, competitive guys like Hornquist, Bennett, Verhage, changes the whole culture, the whole place in one year. That's A++++++. plus 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 plus. Fantastic. Uh, next, Kings, Blake, uh, just has done a really good job building this team. I, I believe he has done a fantastic job of drafting and develop, to developing players. Philip Dano, interesting pickup. Uh, really his first big free agent pickup since starting to rebuild this team. And um, the I, I what I read about it from a lot of uh, writers and stuff like that was that 
they wanted to get a guy that could allow Anze Kopitar to start playing an offensive game again, and that we'll see. And Philip Dano will be able to do that. Now Kopitar doesn't have to be out there against the other team's top line all the time and still pot 50 points in 56 games, which is freaking insane. And he can go out and play some offense. So that's going to be fun to see. So in that way, you got to like it. Uh, good pickup. Now the question mark has been, well, what about Turka? What about Byfield? Uh, he's been uh, Blake and his staff have been very slow with prospects, and they're going to let them go. Uh, the drafting of Gabriel Velarde in 2017 is turning out to be very good. I think he's a better winger. I don't know why they keep on beating him down in the middle. I think he's a better winger. I like him on the wing. He's big. He's solid. He's strong. And they took a a chance on him because he had an injury on his draft year, and he looks like he's turning out very, very well. Um, the drafting of their defense has been superb. Michael Anderson, uh, 103rd overall in 2017. He's playing in their 1-2 spot and doing well doing it. Uh, Tobias Bjornford was a nice pickup in 2019. Matt Roy, 194th in 2014, and here he is playing in the top four, getting a good contract and doing very well. That's not to say guys like Forbert that have left the organization. Uh, bringing over Sean Walker, uh, signed to an ELC. Like they, uh, and Cal Peterson as well. Excellent moves. Uh, there hasn't been too many poor moves. They still got Jason Dolan Anderson, Kapari, Kaliev coming up. They're stacked, their cupboards are full. And uh, they just keep on getting better and better. Uh, I I really love what Blake has done there. I gave him an A, and uh, the community gave him an A minus. Somebody gave him as low as a B. I don't know what that was for. I think he's done great. What do you guys think, LA fans or fans in general, about the LA Kings? Minnesota Wild. Bill Guerin. Ever since he took over, changed. I think he changed the whole energy of this team. First of all, just signing Dean Evison to begin with, that's an A right out of the get-go. Unbelievable coach. Uh, ever since Garen has come in, guys like Greenway, uh, that uh, uh, Joel Erickson Eck um, have just, I think, have improved more than in previous general manager uh, times of previous general managers that have been in there. Uh, now that's part, part and parcel is to hiring Dean Evison to help them along the way, but the general manager has to do that. Uh, so overall, he's just changed the energy of this team. We're going to see what it, the buyout situation with Suter and Parise. Um, basically, to me, he's just ringing in a whole new, bringing in young guys. We're going to focus on building in house here in Minnesota. He's made a statement that we're building in-house, we're building from young players, uh, we're building from our draft, and, uh, you know, grassroots type build compared to what was going on before with guys like Chuck Fletcher. So it's a big statement. We'll see how it turns out. It's kind of an unfinished grade, but so far, um, getting guys like Ryan Hartman, I know a lot of people are going to say Victor Rask is not very – oh, no, he didn't even do that. That was actually uh, Fenton that did Rask. So. We haven't seen too much. Getting Dmitry Kulikov and John Merrill is meh, just filling in some spots. We haven't seen him do overly that much yet, so it's kind of hard to give him a grade. Um, however, we gave him an A and A minus for setting down the roots of this team and not just sitting on the fence, just really making bold decisions. We'll see how they turn out. I think that's going to turn out okay. I love the acquisition of Alex Goligoski. I don't know. There's something about Bill Guerin that just makes you think he's going to do awesome there in Minnesota. So, Next, Montreal Canadiens, the final one that we're going to do today for uh, this video. We'll do another one tomorrow. Uh, and Bergevin. What can you say? Uh, I think they found out that Weber was probably going to have to get surgery after this past year. And he went out and just ruled, rolled the dice, I guess you would say, but did so with a, 
with the uh, intent and uh, wanted to become a playoff team this year. Getting Josh Anderson, you know, overpaying for him heavily in a sense. You know, he's going to be paid till 2027 for $5.5 million. To get out of the Max Domi situation, we'll see how that turns out in the long run. But for now, you got to give it a plus. He did have 17 goals last year. Um, I don't think you're going to see. I think you're going to see a decline in Josh Anderson's game over the course of this contract, and it might not look that great. But um, going out, he just went out and got what he thought he needed, and with Edmondson, uh, the move for Ben Chirot was fantastic. Getting Alexander Romanov, drafting Alexander Romanov um, was great. Before this, their drafting was terrible, but they made up for it with Nick Suzuki and. Just Barry Kokanemi and Cole Caulfield. And uh, also lost in this was this past year, they had tons of draft picks. Uh, so he, even though he knew he was going to be kind of going for it this year, and he also backed it up with a whole bunch of draft picks to build in through this organization as it happened. Next year, he's got all his draft picks as well. So... Overall, what can you say? They made it to the finals. He did a lot of unorthodox stuff. He identified things not working out with Julian, it seems, at the right time. Brings in Ducharme, who just, you know, crushes it. Unorthodox moves, but effective. They made it to the finals. What are you going to say? Uh, so, what did I give? I gave a B plus, And the community gave him... A B. A B. So tell me what you think, Montreal fans. Is that a little low to you? Uh, I almost... Oh, forgot about Jake Allen. Bringing in Jake Allen, knowing that Carey Price was going through some injury issues and stuff like that. Jake Allen held the fort really well. You know, he identified what they needed, and, I, and he went out and got it. I mean, what more can you expect a general manager to do? That's our full 42. That's all I have to give today. Thanks for listening in. We'll talk to you later. Okay, bye.